Well, all right, let's get this day started. Uh, Tom here. Uh, you're watching Joy and Route. Thanks for joining me on the channel today. It's passing 7 a.m. 7 a.m. I can say that. And it's time to uh, get out of sleep mode and get into day mode, right? So the day begins with breaking down the bed, uh, something I do every morning. And if you've watched my really early videos on how I dealt with uh, sleeping and how I set up and broke down uh, the bed. Uh, things have changed significantly from back then. It's much simpler now. Uh, this thing here in front of me is called a duvalet and it's kind of a combination of a duvet and a uh, mattress pad. So there's a one inch memory foam mattress pad and um, it uh, also has a comforter that uh, fits inside the plaid upper uh, full, uh, thing that uh, wraps around you. And uh, on top of the memory uh, pad, what I'm fussing around with right now is a rain leaf microfiber towel. It's one of their extra large towels and I I put that down on the mattress pad uh, in order to be kind of like a top sheet. Uh, that way if it's kind of sticky or whatever, um, I can just very easily pull the, uh, the towel out and wash it. And uh, as opposed to pulling the mattress pad out of its pocket and the um, comforter out of its pocket here in the top plaid section and then just washing you know the um, entire uh, two pocket bedding system which is completely machine washable but anyway I uh, just uh, get everything smoothed out and fold it over and then it just rolls up smooth out the wrinkles as I go grab the straps that it comes with that have you know, the little buckle clips on the ends if I can hold on to it Spin you around here, and what I do with the duvalet once it's all rolled up is I just put it back in my wardrobe wardrobe cabinet for storage throughout the day. Keeps it nice and clean and dust free back there. seat pad spread back uh, in its normal position for when it's in set up as a couch uh, and then uh, get behind the TV there for the controls where I can use the motorized thing to drive it back into couch position Take the bed extender and put it back up against the wall there. There's a box that that sits on that just slides in. And then I get out the lagoon table and uh, get that all set up. It has a rail that that uh, post slides onto. And then 
the levers lock it in place. Now we'll bring the TV back down. I had hit the power button just before putting it back up. If you notice that, that's why it's on now that I've dropped it down when it was off when I put it up. Unfortunately, the TV forgets some of its basic settings, and I have to go through the menus on the TV every single time I start it up just to set it up correctly for watching. Very weird. But there, it's done. The computer usually gets started up if I'm not planning on driving anywhere, so go ahead and get that going. Normally I just use the external monitor, but in order to get the laptop started, I have to open up its screen, wait for it to boot. One eternity later. And once it has booted up, I just go ahead and close the lid because I don't really use the laptop screen uh, here in Joy. I just use the external monitor, which is on a swing arm and it can reposition to best viewing angles. And of course now comes one of the most important and enjoyable parts of my morning, coffee. One solo cup full of water is about 16 ounce coffee. What is that, like a grande if you're at uh, Starbucks or any of the other coffee chains. And I make two of them in a day, or in the morning actually. I never drink coffee in the afternoon, not anymore anyway. Plug in the induction cooktop, get it rocking, heating that water. It's a Folgers container, but it's actually Costco coffee. I just love that uh, resealable container. So I just kept it, and repurposed it for different kinds of coffee. pre-wet the grounds a little bit before I do the final pour. Let them soak for a little bit while they release their lovely coffee flavor. How do you guys make coffee in the morning? I've been using this pour over method for quite some time. I kind of like it. I don't grind my own beans anymore. I just use um, uh, ground coffee. Usually I uh, pull out the uh, backrest cushion and 
uh, put it uh, at the end of the couch there and just put its normal backrest cushion in the driver's seat up in the cab of joy but uh, that's very comfortable and as you can see the lagoon table makes an excellent workstation table I'm just waiting for the water to finish going through the, the grounds and give it a few taps to maybe help it along. And then discard the filter and the spent coffee grounds. I just love the easy cleanup. Just pull the filter out, drop it into the trash, and that's, that's it. All right, I now have some coffee. Time to check out a little YouTube. today to have a conversation that has been just really on my mind. It's time that we got out for a little bit of a hike this morning. Uh, sun is coming up and uh, it's a nice looking day out there so we're gonna go and enjoy a little bit of it especially early in the morning. Temperature right now is uh, mm -hmm. get it so you can read it. 61.3 degrees inside here at 71 degrees. I think what I'm going to do is turn on the max air fan here and just let it exhaust a little bit of heat while we're away. Turn that light off. And, um, yeah, so we are up here at the top of the north loop and what I've been wanting to do since I've gotten here but haven't really figured out how to do it uh, because of course I was too silly and didn't bother to look at the map is to try and figure out where the swimming beach is so that's apparently down here so I'm seeing too that there's apparently a hiking trail uh, between the south loop and the beach so we're going to try and find that little hiking trail to go down to the beach. And uh, along the way, we'll kind of take a look at and see what's going on here in the park. So let's get out there and do that. We're going to bring this along just to make sure that we don't get lost. It's pretty hard to get lost in a state park, but who knows? Somebody will probably do it one day, and I don't want that to be me. All right. First, I gotta unlock the door. Okay, we're good. And hello, morning. And now we gotta lock the door again. And let's see what we got here. I think we'll go this way. People are going to be waking up and cooking. I think we're passing. I don't know, what time is it? It's 8.02. So we're just passing 8. Now, I arrived here at Icelandic State Park this past Wednesday. 
and it was kind of a gray day and um, windy and this place was a ghost town nobody here uh, somebody pulled in later after I did on this same road so at least I had one neighbor but um, yeah the park was just an absolute ghost town and um, Thursday it rained just like all day I mean I'm dead serious all day long so well that was a wasted day well I got a lot of work done inside but um, you know as we do when it's <laughs> raining um, but uh, yeah rained all day and then came Friday and late in the afternoon the place absolutely exploded with people it was crazy I never saw so many uh, campers and trailers and everything else come rolling on in here which is great you know I mean that's the way it, it kind of goes. You got the, the weekend warrior campers that do their thing over the weekend. We'll go down this way. Uh, we're still in the north loop. But you can kind of, you can see, you know, like there was nobody here before, but now it's just full. It's Sunday morning right now. So, um, and I notice on the cards that the park gives you to um, pinned to your little your little site uh, number post that uh, a lot of the cards say that they will be departing today so you know you get here Friday night you stay Friday night Saturday night and then you're out Sunday you know and then you're back to work if you're into that whole work thing. How I managed to get to retirement, I have no clue. Eh, wasn't really expected. Got a vault toilet over there. Dumpster. Clearly there's uh, swimming somewhere here, as, <laughs> as you can see by their clothesline. But yeah, I mean, look at all the campers here. And this is just a small fraction of the park. Um, this is still in the north loop. There is a east loop, as you probably saw on the map, and a south loop. And uh, they're all full. So, I mean, I guess that's the thing you got to be mindful of when you're making reservations at a state park. And the state parks are so popular that um, that the weekends are going to be difficult. Now, there are reservation windows, though, so you don't have to assume that you'll never get in. You just need to, you know, do it early enough to where... Um, the availability will be there. Um, and I actually made reservations in this park probably about 10 days out. And I don't think that there were all that many sites for me to choose from, as you might imagine, because Look at all the people here this weekend. <clears throat> and my reservation was for a Wednesday night through Sunday night. So whereas most people will be leaving today, I won't be leaving until tomorrow. And tomorrow we head over to the International Peace Garden, which has a park, a campground. And so we'll go and we'll check that out. But look at this park, you guys. Icelandic State Park. 
We're just a little way south of the Canadian border in northeastern uh, North Dakota. Good morning. Good morning. From the map here, I think what I need to do is ignore the first left turn here and go on to the second one. And then maybe some more back in that direction, we're gonna find that trail that leads down to the beach. Looks like from the beach the sun will be coming up um, <clears throat> not quite behind us but to the left of us so I think lighting would, should be pretty nice for that well if you can tell there are some clouds up there uh, the sky is hazy it's been quite humid up here ever since I got here uh, and the temperatures have been in the uh, very low 80s, but with the humidity it feels pretty kind of hot. And I don't have much sun at my uh, campsite, and that uh, leads to a lot of solar heating. on the van and that makes me have to run the AC in order to bleed off that heat. All right, somewhere here is going to be a uh, trail and I'm guessing it's going to be this right here that leads down to the beach. Have you noticed all the different types of uh, camping equipment that people have? A lot of, uh, you know, trailers pull behinds. Got some fifth wheels and, uh, yeah, trail. And uh, a lot of tent campers, uh, which is interesting. And uh, of course they arrive in like a car or an SUV or something like that and they set up a big old tent and uh, then that's how they how they do their weekend camping which is not a bad way to go actually don't need a lot of space or a big vehicle to pull that off this is a beautiful little trail but I can really tell by the trees off in the distance just how humid it is. Oh, the lake's going to be pretty. So we've come up to a parking area, which I knew that that was going to happen, according to the map. way. I 
nice volleyball pit here. And looks like there's all sorts of kayaks here. One thing I was told, um, there are bikes here in the park. I don't know if they're electric or not. I think they look like they're electric bikes. And uh, the, um, the um, campground map says you can rent them. And I talked to the uh, gate guard who told me that um, they couldn't figure out how to get the app to work, so <laughs> you can just use them for free. <laughs> so, hey, <laughs> can't beat that. I wonder about these uh, kayaks, too. This is uh, rental by the hour or day. Contact the park staff. So, I don't know if they're free also or what the deal is. Got some people out here. Or out on a kayaking board or kayak. Oh, looks like we've had some sandcastle building going on. I don't know if the pails and whatnot belong to somebody or just have been left behind. <laughs> looks like somebody's swimming suit. Okay. Oh, but look at this lake, you guys. Very nice. Can you sense the haze in the air, though? There's your full 360. Beautiful lake. All right, let's head back. See what other trouble we can get into. On the way back, I'm just gonna take the road See what it looks like up this way. One thing that didn't pan out, sadly, I was really bummed by this one, um, was a visit to a place known as RSL-3. It's an Army Missile Corps ICBM site and uh, decommissioned and now privately owned. And apparently the current owner conducts tours of the uh, decommissioned nuclear launch site. And um, it turns out that apparently they have summer hours and they have fall hours. And... Uh, we're in between the two right now. So I drove over there, had not understood that that was going to be the situation. Daily tours, um, 
Just not today, apparently. Looks like we're past uh, the summer hours and um, or the summer uh, dates and now we're in between the summer and the fall dates so I guess it's just closed now. No indication of that uh, here at all uh, which is not very helpful. So we'll give up on uh, this, uh, what would have been, I think, a pretty cool uh, tour, but uh, not going to happen. Well, shoot. So I guess we won't be touring an old decommissioned missile silo. Uh, that would have been very cool, frankly. Uh, apparently, long term, the owner has the idea of creating a B&B &B in there. Or an Airbnb or something, I don't know. And um, so that will, you know, be a thing. People can say that they spent the night in a missile silo. <laughs> we won't get to see it though. So sorry. Bad timing. Yeah, because I mean, we're right at the end of the summer at this point. We're about halfway through August, so, yeah, nevertheless, a lot of people still out camping, and that's a good thing. It's weird, I can, there are times that I feel um, really comfortable and happy when the park is uh, kind of like a ghost town, but there's something magical, I guess, about uh, the parks when there's all sorts of people around, and the, the kids are all here, and they're with their families, and it just seems like something that this country desperately needs is uh, family time and uh, getting out and enjoying nature and uh, you know maybe getting away from all the social media the continuous barrage of social media and continuously negative news you know that kind of thing so, I guess I like it either way is kind of what I'm, what I'm saying is I, um, I enjoy it when the parks are pretty sparsely populated. You feel kind of a little bit more uh, solo and on your own. But it's also a great one. There's all sorts of people here too. Looks like I have found a little amphitheater. Restrooms. Hi guys. Hi. And a nice little amphitheater. Close that. Oh, it doesn't need to be open. Attracting flies. Got a nice JBL sound system up here. Picnic tables. And then here are some of those bikes, or one of those bikes.
I mean, it looks like it's a... It looks like it's an e-bike, right? Because usually the e-bikes have these things here, but... Um, maybe not. Um, those feel like brakes. Nope, I guess not. I think they're just regular old pedal bikes. But uh, for free, that's, you know, kind of cool. Needs a new seat there. Don't think I'd want to sit on that. Not after a dewy night or like after the rains that were here on Thursday all day. I am in campsite number 127. It's really pretty up that way. Good still picture for the park from there. Looks good on video anyway. And if I walk around this way, we'll eventually loop back to where Joy is. You do have a couple of um, cabins that you can uh, rent. There's one or two on each of the loops. Looks like these folks are ready to head out. Morning. Everybody is so friendly in the parks. I mean, I suppose that there could be some that are grumpy gusses. And uh, I think we've all heard stories, right? Of people who <laughs> maybe shouldn't have been camping. <laughs> but uh, for the most part, I find people are so, so friendly. Hi there. Morning. Joy comes back into view. We've gotten in a few steps for the day. I'll probably get in some more before the end, but for now, I'll start working on some other stuff while a lot of people just go ahead and prepare themselves to head out of the park and get back to their weekday lives. 
for me now. I'm just going to leave the door open here and uh, time to uh, move on and do some other work. I'll talk to you later.